Hello guys, what's up? My name is Donnie, and today I'll be reading A History of U.S. Volume D, Chapter 57, Nixon, Vietnam, China, and Watergate. In the second half of the 20th century, 1968 stands out as a pivotal year. Things changed dramatically in 1968. It was the year of two awful assassinations. It was the year of the Tet Offensive in Vietnam. Tet is the Vietnamese New Year, a very big holiday. The North Vietnamese launched an attack during Tet. A lot of American soldiers were killed, and we realized we weren't winning that war, although our leaders have been telling us that we were. The year 1968 was one of urban riots and protests on college campuses. It was the year a computer named Howe starred in a movie, and people gasped when they considered where technology might lead. It was an election year. The end of in the end of a liberal era and the beginning of more conservative times. It was the year Richard Mihalis Nixon was elected president. Nixon's ancestors were Quakers. Richard, a quiet, dark-eyed, serious boy, got good grades in school. In high school, he learned to debate and act. Then he went to Whitner College in California was president of the student council and got a scholarship to Duke University Law School across the country in North Carolina. He served in the U.S. Navy during World War II. It was politics that always seemed to interest him, so as a young lawyer, when he got chances to run for Congress and then the Senate, he grabbed them. But then he used mudslinging and dirty tricks in his campaigns. For example, he accused some of his opponents of being communists, which he knew they weren't. In Congress, Nixon was no, became known as a tough anti-communist. He impressed people. He was smart, industrious, and ambitious. Dwight D. Eisenhower asked him to be his vice president, and he did a good job in that office. People began talking about the two Nixons. One was very capable. The other Nixon didn't seem to care about truth and honor. When he became president, he brought... Two, two, he brought those two personalities with him. Richard Nixon, the statesman, talked of law and order, and after months of riots in our cities, that was just what most Americans wanted to hear. But the other Richard Nixon had no respect for the law when it affected him. He claimed that he had a plan to end the war, but he never said what the plan was. Then he kept fighting us. He kept us fighting in Vietnam for almost five more years. He was re-elected in 1972. He took the war into, oh, and here's a slide, neighboring Cambodia and Laos without telling Congress that he planned to do it. He dropped more bombs than any other president in our history, although he said he wanted to be a peacemaker. The anti-war demonstrations had been bad when Lyndon Johnson was president. They were worse for President Nixon. Nixon's intelligent, reasonable side helped him lead the nation in a new foreign policy direction. And here's a slide up here. I'll let you guys read that on your own. Nixon was a pragmatist, which means a practical thinker, and he understood that the world was changing and that it was it was time to try to work with the communist nations. So, he went to China and improved relations with that enormous nation. Then he went to Moscow, Russia's capital, the first American president to do so, and once again showed concern for world harmony. We got out of Vietnam at much as we had gotten in, one step at a time. It was called phase withdrawal. But after Saigon, the capital of South Vietnam, Vietnam fell to northern forces. We finally withdrew completely. We had lost the war, although we didn't quite admit it. We were confused and humbled and weary. We needed to feel good about ourselves again, but something was going on at home that left us even more upset and dismayed. The problem, again, was one of leadership. Something happened to Richard Nixon that's important for you to understand. It happened because of that distrustful side of his nature. He imagined enemies. He seemed to think that because he was president, he was above the law. But he was missing the whole point of American democracy. No one is above the law, not even the president. Richard Nixon forgot that the president is, the ser is a servant of the people. He allowed his staff to play dirty, illegal tricks on his opponents. 
Burglars broke into a Democratic Party headquarters and stole documents. Burglars broke into a psych, psych, psychiatrist's office and stole the confidential records of someone Nixon disliked. People tapped telephone lines and listened to private conversations. Money was gathered and used in illegal ways. Lies were told about people Nixon disliked. The, pre the government's tax office was used against his enemies. All those things were against the law. When some of that wrongdoing became known, people in the Nixon White House did something even worse. They paid hush money to keep people quiet and to have others lie and sworn testimony to judges and juries. It was the bottom moment in history of the presidency. It was called Watergate because the Democratic Party headquarters were in fancy Washington's fancy Watergate apartments. Nixon's dirty tricks workers burglarized those Watergate headquarters. They rented, they rented a room in a nearby hotel so they could spy on the Watergate. Shameful as it was, there was, there was something positive about Watergate, Watergate. Our democratic system worked. When two Washington Post reporters, Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein, which you saw on the previous page, found out about the burglaries and the dirty tricks, they t told of them. It took great courage to accuse a president and his aides. Richard Nixon almost got away with criminal acts, but he didn't. The president was not above the law, nor were other people in his administration. Vice President Spiro Agnew admitted to filing a false and fraudulent tax return. Agnew left office, was fined $10,000, and was sentenced to three years probation. 56 men in the Nixon administration were convicted of Watergate-related crimes. Some went to jail. The, Constitu the Constitution writers had prepared for this kind of emergency by giving Congress the power to impeach and try a president. In the House of Representatives, articles of impeachment were prepared. President Nixon was charged with lying, obstructing justice, and using the Internal Revenue Service, tax office, and other government agencies illegally. Nixon was going to be impeached. After that, he would face a trial in the Senate for high crimes and misendeavors, and he chose to leave the presidency instead. He resigned as President of the United States, the only man ever to do so. Um, here, Here's a little something about Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo. In 1957, the Russians sent a satellite called Sputnik into space. Sputnik was a shock. It made us feel that we were wait falling behind Russia and when it came to technology and, and science. And I, I will actually let you guys read the rest of that later. It's about the first men in America on the moon. And that is actually it. Next one you will be reading is chapter 58, A Congressman and a Peanut Farmer. So, thank you guys for listening to chapter 57 about Richard Nixon. Don't forget to like the video, hit the subscribe button, and thanks for watching.